Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Shall we start our class? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So in today's class, we are going to uh, discuss one important topic that is important one of the Amazon Web Services that is Route 53. Route 53. I hope PPT further. Let me open it up. Route 53. So let's see what is this Route 53. Route 53 is Amazon's DNS service. Domain name system. DNS means domain name system. It is Amazon's DNS service. So why they have given the name 53? Because DNS port number is 53. Just like we have SSH 22, HTTP 80, HTTPS 443. Like DNS port number is 53. And with that, they have given the name called root 53. With that, root 53. Now, first of all, what is the purpose of DNS? DNS, the purpose of DNS is to convert IP address to user-friendly name, like see here. Um, let me explain. If you want to access Google, if you want to access Google, here what I do, if I know Google's IP address, instead of typing google.com, here I can give Google IP address. Actually, that is a thing. I have to give IP address. Google server's IP address. You remember the web server we created, right? Web server. That time I have shared one IP address. So if I want to access Google server, I need to give Google's IP address. But can I remember that IP address? Suppose if I ask you, hey, uh, earlier we created web server, uh, okay, please tell me that IP address. So you can't say that one because you can't remember, right? So we can't remember IP addresses. And machine cannot understand names. Actually, here you have to give IP address only. Machine cannot understand names. Here, this is my laptop. This is Google server. Okay. You can't remember Google server's IP address and Google server cannot understand names. Okay, simple. You know, right? Uh, you save four numbers with some names, correct? In your phone, you save four numbers with some name. Okay. Why? Why? Because see, you can't remember four numbers and your cell phone cannot understand names. It needs a number, correct or not? But you can't remember those numbers. That's why you save that number with some name. So that when you refer the name back end, that will be referred to that number. And then you can make a call, telephone directory, you know, right? Okay, you open the directory. In that, you can see the name with respect to number. So here, same thing. We can't remember IP addresses. Machine cannot understand names. So to address this issue, we have a server called DNS server. DNS. Okay, DNS. So when you type google.com, this is what we call domain name or DNS name. You can call domain name or DNS name, www.google.com. It's a domain name or you can call DNS name. When you type, okay, your DNS server is right. So in the DNS server, they have mentioned clearly that, okay, google.com, its IP address is this one, so and so. Okay, and facebook.com, its IP address is so and so. When you type Google, that request will go to DNS server first. And it will take respect to IP, that request will go to through IP. Communication happens through IP. 
response will come in the same manner ip reverse in the reverse order so dns server is responsible to convert name to ip address and ip to name okay name to ip address and ip address to name okay that's the purpose of dns server <coughs> understanding right see dns is used to convert human friendly domain names into ip addresses and vice versa you know right the purpose of ip address okay every machine should have one ip address it's kind of you know unique uh, you can think of numerical name your two ip ip4 and ip6 that already you know that's the purpose of dns now just like the way public ip is unique right you know right public ip is unique okay so for that we have to attach we are attaching one name that also should be unique the domain name also should be unique correct or not okay suppose if i have if i attach a same domain name like google.com to two ip addresses then when you type google.com whether the request should go to this ip or this ip ip means it is having one server right so in, so in the same manner every public ip should be attached to one domain name not should be that's up to you if you can't remember the uh, number okay just like the way we have unique public ips in the same manner we have unique domain names unique okay so to have vast number of you know unique domain names they have divided into sub categories okay just to increase the number those are top level domain names second top level third top level like that so top level second level like see it dot com is right that is top level domain name dot com dot in dot uk you know like that dot org okay like that these are top level domain names the last word in the domain name represents top level domain either you can call domain name or dns name both are same to just make it unique see india is in india there could be so many other departments right we have one more uniqueness here they are giving dot go dot in government of india dot edu dot in education department in india so here second level that we call second level domain names just to increase the number to make it unique to make it unique understanding right in, the, in that in that manner for example you know right uh, number plate car number plate okay if you see dl Delhi. In that Delhi, suppose you have some twenty-nine number is there. Okay, twenty-nine so and so. So, for example, M H Maharashtra. In that again, district wise, these are you know state wise. In that again, district wise, they give one more number. Then again, numbers like this. Okay, just to make it more you know to increase the number. Understanding right? That is how it works. So, top level domain name, second level, just like the way we have unique public IPs. to every public ip if you want domain name that also should be unique hey suppose i want google.com i can't get it because that is already engaged with google company that you can't get it okay so from where you get this domain you need to buy these domain names guys just like the way you are buying this you uh, know public ips from aws now in the same manner you have to buy unique domain names okay if you buy the domain name that will be with you forever i mean the you know you need to renew again public ips aws is managing right you stop the server that will be attached to some other machine but that is not the case with the domain names because there could be limit to public ips but there won't be any limit to domain names correct we have n number of names for example see google.com is it even if i remove one single word this will be unique domain name okay if i remove one word that will be one more unique okay google one google to like that there is there is no limit for ip before there is a limit but for domain names there is no limit you can use any of the word right correct or not so that's why there is no limit that's why if you buy any domain name that will be with you as long as that you want okay so there must be some organization back end it should it should manage all these domain names for example i want google.com but that is already engaged with google company so who is managing all these things at back end yes there is one company called i a n a you can see i a n a i know so this organization is responsible to 
manage global public IP addresses. Private IP, no need, right? Anyways, we can use again. Ports is global IP address allocation and also domain names here. Management of domain names. Okay, this organization is managing this one. Okay, this organization. Now, we can't buy everything. Okay, we can't directly go to this company. We can't buy those domain names. Correct or not? That's why these companies, you know, authorizing some registers, domain registers, we call domain registers. For example, Reserve Bank of India is an RBA. For every problem, you can't go to that RBA, go to Delhi and all. That's why it kept sub branches in every state. So that if you have any issues, you can go to this one. Okay, so that, that will be resolved. Back end, this is connected with main RBA. Correct or not? The same. See, central government is there. You are not getting water in your washroom. So you can't go to Delhi, you can't raise a complaint to Prime Minister. Correct or not? That's it. Why, but but the, why are they? They are there to listen our problems. Why we elected them? To, so that they can address our issues. My issue is I am not getting wa water in my washroom. So that is my issue. So they have to resolve. But I can't go to Delhi and I can't raise a complaint to Prime Minister every now and then. So that's why we have sub no state governments. In that also, we have district governments. In that also, you know, like, you know, local bodies, right? So I raise a complaint to them. If it is not getting resolved at this stage, they back in like that. Same, Supreme Court, state, you know, court, high court, then district court. If you are not getting justice here, you go to here. Not getting justice, you go to Supreme Court, like that. So here also, since this organization cannot manage all these things, that's why we have sub-registrars or the domain registrars. Those are good idea. Okay, domain sellers, big rock. Okay, big rock. Uh, like you know, many many domain registrars are there. Back end, all these registrars are linked to this organization IAN. So if you want to buy any domain name, you can buy from any of these domain registrars. AWS is also one of the registrar. You can buy from any of these registrar. Back end. They will tie up with this main organization. Okay, these we call domain names. You can buy from anyone. Suppose if you buy one domain name from this organization, GoDaddy, that same name cannot buy from other domain registered by someone else. You can't buy because these all are engaged, right? That entry will be stored here. When someone wants to buy the same name with other register, first it will verify whether that is engaged or not. So it will show that hey, that is already registered. That's this organization is managing all these things. Okay, those we call domain registrars. Okay, AWS is also one registrar. Suppose I want to buy one domain name so that that domain name I can attach to my public IP whenever I want. Okay, I can attach that one to my public IP. So that instead of sharing public IP, if I have web server, instead of sharing for public IP to my customers because they can't remember IP access, what again I can give that domain name. Okay, that is how it works. Let me just show you. See, uh, if you want to buy any domain name, you can buy from AWS also. What you do, go to root 53 under networking and content delivery. Go to root 53. Here you can buy a domain name. You can buy. Let me just show you how to buy. Here you can see registered domains. Click that. Say so register domain. I want to buy one domain. Click here, register. Yeah, here you can buy. See a .com. What is the extension that you want? Suffix .com, .net, .org. What do you want? That's up to you. you can choose from all these lists. We can see .xyz, .website, .wiki, .envo, .vaccination. So many things are there. .dot service. N number of things are there. There is no limit. Okay, dot org, dot, generally we use dot com, dot net, dot org, dot co, dot info, something, right? Okay, so the popular one is dot com, commercial. Okay, if you want to have a website for any commercial purpose, we use dot com, that is a popular one, but you can have, that's your name. That is up to you, whatever you want, you can have, that is up to you. Okay, like, okay, so I want dot com. Okay, in that, which name you want? 
like side.com. I want to have triple W dot side.com. But I need to verify. So here, when I click here, check, it will verify whether that name is available or not in IA engine. This AWS will verify. It is saying that, hey, side.com is already taken by someone else. It is not available. You better choose some other name. See, they are giving suggestions. You can choose all these things. For example, I'll give one more site. Okay. Sci.com. Check. That is also not available. Okay. I would like to have one more site. <laughs> Same like your email ID, guys. You need to make it unique. That is also not available. Oh my God. So hyphen. See here. I'll use sci sci hyphen test. See here. Triple side test. Should be available. Yes, it is available. Yeah. Now I can have domain with this one. Sci 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 test.com. Triple W dot something. Just click here, add to cart. And see here. You, you want to register for how many years? If you are registering for one year, $12 per year. No, sorry, I want for three years, $36. That's it, like that, you can register, you can, you can hold. So every year you have to register. Otherwise that will be taken by someone else. You lose your domain, got it? That is so. So after every, that you know, you have to renew. So, so okay, three years means uh, $36. Then click here, continue. And there you have to give your card details and all. Then you can buy the domain name. So after buying, if you give card details, then automatically that will be attached to your AWS account. See, these are one which I purchased. Sai Cloud Expert. I mean, I'm not an expert, uh, but that time when I was you know, trying to buy, so that time I got this one unique and I found it you know, seems good. <laughs> okay, that's why I purchased this one. You can see sciclaudexpert.com. These are one which I purchased. So but if you want to buy this one, you can't buy this one. Because already this is with me, right? You can't buy. See, so uh, August 15th, this is valid till 2021, August 15th. After that, again, I have to renew. That is how we buy domain names. Understood? We buy domain names. Or you can call this one as DNS names. Okay, that is a history. That is the actual purpose of domain names. That's the actual purpose. Guys, you understood, right? Till here? Till here, you understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, auto renew is there. Yes, sir. Ah, that is there. Auto renew is there. I have enabled that one because, you know, by mistake, if I forget to renew, people, other, someone else will take that one. Then I can't get that one back. Correct or not? Okay. That is the reason. Yeah. See, that is actual purpose. Okay. But in AWS, there is one more purpose either for DNS. Okay, one more purpose is there for that. That is, let me explain. In AWS, actually what you are doing, see, first purpose is instead of giving, you know, see, what actually we do, this is my, uh, these are my web servers. Anyways, we attach all the web servers to one load balancer. But load balancer DNS name is not user-friendly, not at all user-friendly. People cannot remember. That's why from root 53, I'm going to buy one user-friendly domain name that we attach to load balancer domain name. That domain you can attach to either individual server or load balancer domain name. Okay, that user-friendly domain name I give to customers. So they can remember that one easily. So when they try to access the request will come here, one here, one here, one here. But the request is coming from that user-friendly domain name, www.sci.com, like that. Okay. So here, why are we using this root 53 domain name? Instead of providing complex, difficult load balancer DNS name to public, I am providing user-friendly domain name to public. I'm repeating as instead of providing, instead of providing this uh, difficult DNS name, load balancer difficult DNS name to public, I am providing root 53's user-friendly domain name to public so that they can remember easily. That is the primary reason. That is the first purpose of, you know, uh, buying domain name. Guys, you understood this point? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yes. apart from that, there is one more reason. Is it? In Route 53, we are getting one more advantage. That is what I am going to explain. There is one more advantage. That is...
that is uh, this is my availability zone assume that this is my availability zone availability zone guys okay in region you have multiple availability zones right this is my availability zone assume that in this availability zone i have two web servers web server on web server two. what i do what you can do you can attach these two to load balancer correct you can attach this one to load balancer correct or not? so here the purpose of load balancer is to distribute the load that is fine apart from that the main advantage is even if you lose one server load balancer is it will distribute traffic to other server that means here load balancer is protecting my server correct it is uh, protecting us from server failures everybody load balancer is protecting us from server failure so we we'll assume that you you don't have load balancer you have only one web server if what if you lose your web server correct or not but if you have multiple web servers if you attach load balancer even if you lose one web, web server your website will not go down because load balancer will distribute traffic to some other server correct so here load balancer is protecting us from server failures server failures but the problem is here what if i lose my availability zone right or not what if i lose my availability zone okay so now let me take one region this is a region in that we have two availability zones in this region two availability zones availability zone a availability zone b two availability zones are there. now i have uh, you know one web server here one web server here okay so what you can do you can have load balancer here also that means you can attach load balancer to servers which could be in a same availability zone which could be in other availability zones that's what we have seen it in auto scaling you know uh, one one server will launch in one one availability zone correct you remember right four servers we launched we kept in all three availability zones that means here suppose let me take one more server in this case see here 1 2 3 4 four web servers are there if i lose one server there won't be any problem load balancer will distribute traffic to other server even though if i lose entire availability zone still i don't have any problem because load balancer will distribute traffic to the servers which are there in other availability zone that means in second scenario load balancer is helping us from availability zone failures also in first scenario load balancer is helping us protecting us from server failure in second scenario load balancer is protecting us from availability zone failures correct but what if i lose my entire region what if i lose my entire region then see here this is one region one more region you can take any region like you know one is you know, um, london there are only sydney two regions are there. two regions okay so in each region i have two two servers those could be in the same availability zone could be in different different availability zones now anyways you can have load balancer in region these are two regions okay each region you have multiple servers those could be in same availability zone could be different availability zones now can you have one more load balancer like this no load balancer is an internal part of a region it's a internal part of any region i'm repeating guys see load balancer is an internal component of any region so that's why you can see inside region you can keep but you can't take out of that region that is not possible that means you can't have load balancer here you can have inside region okay so that means load balancer cannot protect us from regional failures correct at regional level we don't have anything to help correct or not okay so here comes here comes root 53 so what we do here root 53 we connect to load balancer like this root 53 domain name we connect to multiple load balancer domain names okay so that even if you lose 
any region no problem route 53 will route traffic to some other region that means route 53 is helping us from regional failures okay route 53 is helping us from regional failures load balancer is protecting you from server failures and availabilities on failures but not regional failures so who is there to help from you know regional failures route 53 so you can connect route 50 through multiple regions load balancers so even if you lose one region no problem route 53 will route the traffic to some other region got it so this is second advantage i'm repeating guys the first advantage is the first advantage is install providing load balancers difficult dns name to public you are giving route 53 is user friendly domain name to public the second advantage is route 53 is protecting you from regional failures. These are the two advantages that we are getting in Route 53. Very, very important, guys. Guys, you understood this one? Everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, here, how load balance are distributing traffic equally? Because load balance, the name itself, balancing one here, one here, one here, one here. That way, that we call round robin. Round robin model. Round robin means one here, one here, one here, one here. Equally distribution of traffic equally. That is what we call round robin. So three hours are there. One here, second here, third here. Fourth, six, six, seventh, eight, nine, tenth, eleven, twelve. This model we call round robin. So load balancer follows that one. Load balancer distributes equally. Okay, we don't have any uh, you know uh, customization of that distribution of load at load balancer. Okay, we don't customize, but but at route 53, they're giving options to customize. That means you can define how route 53 should distribute the traffic. You can define how you want route 53 should distribute the traffic. What kind of routing, the type, or you can call policy you want. What kind of routing policy you want at route 53? Like, okay, see route 53 should send 10% traffic here, 90% here. That you can define. Okay, 50% here. 50% here that you can define. For example, it should send 100% here only. If at all my region goes down, then only it should send traffic to this one, kind of fail over. If it fails, then only it will switch to this one. So you can have, you can have your own routing policy. Routing policy means how you want route 53 should distribute the traffic between these two regions. Okay, so that policy you can define. Okay, whether it is 100, 0, 50, like you can define your own routing policy. Total, we have five routing policies are there. At route 53 level, we have five routing policies. Those are these things. I'm repeating as root policy means how you want route 53 should distribute the traffic between or among regions. Okay, those are routing policies. Simple, weighted, latency, failover, geolocation. Simple weighted latency failover geolocation. Let's see, let's discuss all these routing policies one by one. Today we'll see theoretically. Next class, we are going to see all these things practically. Okay. Fine. Now, first one. First routing policy is simple routing policy. Guys, in simple routing policy, you attach only one region. One region means in that region, VPC you are going to connect. Region means what? VPC you are going to connect. So simple routing policy where you attach only one region only. But in all other routing policies, you can attach more than one. Okay. So simple routing policy. What actually happens in simple routing policy? In simple routing policy. Let me write. You know, sorry. In simple, you have only one region. See. This is a region, one region, load balancer, web servers. Correct? Web servers. Now, here, what you do? This is root 53. Load balancer DNS name is right. Root 53's DNS name is that you buy. Here, which one is user friendly? 
root 53c is user friendly that we are going to buy load balance of dn stream is not user friendly what do you do you attach these two then you give root 53 dn stream to power data then people will use root 53 dn stream the request will come here one here one here one here, like that simple routing policy where you attach only one region to root 53 one region only so here out of two advantage you are getting only one what is the first one instead of providing load balancers difficult dns stream to public you are providing root 53 is user friendly domain name to public the first one you are getting first advantage but second advantage you are not getting what is the second one root 53 is helping you from regional failures so what if you lose your region there is no other region right you have only one region so you are not getting second advantage so when we use this one if your business is very small where you have only one region in one country if it is very small then you go for simple routing policy you don't have other region right you have only one region your business is pretty small then you go for this one first of all losing region is not so easy guys you will never lose but here you are getting only one advantage okay but in all other routing policies you are getting all other advantages that i am going to show you so first let me show you simple routing policy here root 53 one region it's a region okay so these are default routing policy that means if you don't choose any routing policy by default this will be selected this is most commonly used when you have a single region that performs performs a given function for your domain if you have single region then you use this one. see customers they access root 53 it will send that request to that particular region got it simple routing policy the next one is a weighted routing policy weighted weighted means in all other routing policies you connect multiple regions let me show you this is one region this is one more region load balancer okay load balancer okay here root 53 that domain name you to customers now what you do you connect root 53 is domain name to multiple load balancers domain names multiple like here two okay so what actually happens so the routing policy you are going to discuss that is weighted weighted means guys the name itself suggests weightage weightage right based on the weightage so what you do you assign some numbers suppose if i give 10 here if i give 90 root 53 will route 10% traffic to here 90% traffic to other region so based on weights that you assign root 53 will split the traffic so you are giving 40 here 60 so out of 100% traffic customer requests 40% will go to region one region you take any region like you know, london sydney okay so 40% will go here remaining 60% will go here that is the that means based on the weights that you assign roof 53 will split the traffic will split okay so 40 here 60 here then load balancer will do its work in that 40 One here, one here, one here, one here. Load balancer is having its own, you know, it follows its own way. That is what weighted routing policy. See here, based upon the weights that you assign, weighted routing policy policies let you split your traffic, split your traffic based upon the weights that you assign. Weights. See here, here twenty percent weightage, eighty percent. So twenty percent to this region, so eighty percent to this. See here. One region, eighty percent of that region. That is what weighted routing calls. Okay. And third one is latency. Latency means network delay. Correct. The meaning of latency is network delay. Okay, network delay. See here, what actually happens here? Um. 
suppose one customer is trying to access the website. That website is there in both locations. But Route 53 will decide that if I send his request to London, assume that, you know, if Route 53 send his request to London region to get a response, it is taking some five minutes. Actually, that will be milliseconds only, but assume that five minutes. If it send that request to Sydney, it is taking seven minutes to get the response. So here, Sydney it is taking more time. That's why Route 53 will send that request to London region. That means Route 53 will decide that okay, uh, Route 53 will make sure that will make sure that it, it is sending request to the region from where it is getting quick response, where latency is less. See, at the end of the day, users should access website quickly. Correct. So Route 53 will always make sure that that it is sending requests to the region from where it is getting quick response, quick response. Assume that after one hour, one hour, one hour, um, here it is taking some eight minutes. Here it is taking seven minutes to get the response. So Route 53 immediately will send the request to Sydney. Okay, that is based upon the network latency. Based on that, assume that's here. In London, climatic conditions are not good. Okay, it's cloudy, rainy and all. Okay, assume that user is in Paris. Even though he is very near to London, but still in London, climatic conditions are not good. But in Sydney, it's full sunny and you know good weather. So obviously, you know, that request it goes faster, right? Okay. So from Sydney, is you getting quick response? Yeah, route 53 will route that request to Sydney. That means purely based on network latency. Okay, for that, you might be thinking, Sai, how does route 53 come to know that from here it is getting quick response, from here it is staying more time. So route 53, before it sends customer request, route 53 will send its own internal ping request. Its own ping request. Then it will calculate the time. Okay, to get the response, it is staying in some five minutes. To get the response, it is staying in seven minutes. Always, it continues to do this one. So that means always route 53 has the data about the latency. Now, when customer, when they try to access, the request will be routed to London because here it is getting quick response. Okay, that is purely based on network latency. Okay, let me show you. Here you can see user route 53, two regions. So to get the response from first region, it is, you know, we are getting response within 100 milliseconds. But here it is showing 300 milliseconds. Okay. See, in that case, root 53 will send the request to the first region because here less time, right? That means I'm getting quick response. Latency based routing allows you to route your traffic based on the lowest network latency. Based on lowest network latency for your end user. That means the region from where you are getting faster response. Okay, to that region, it will send the request. Always it will try to make sure that user is getting response within no time, within less time. That is what latency. The next one is failover. Fail Guys, the name itself you understood by listening to the name failover. That means one fails, then only it will send request to other. Let me explain. Failover. That means in this case, route 53, see, suppose in this, I would like to have primary and standby setup. Uh, this, I, I want this one as primary. This one, I would like to have secondary. Main and standby, kind of. So I want route 53 should send 100% traffic to primary only. Because of any reason, if I lose my region, then route 53, route 53 should redirect the traffic to standby region automatically, failover. If it fails, then second one is acting like a disaster recovery. DR site we call disaster recovery, disaster recovery. Standby guys, simple standby. Like, you know, this is main power supply. This is inverter. If you lose power supply, immediately all electronic, you know, appliances will be switched to inverter. So if you get your supply back, these connections will come back automatically. 
Correct or not? That is how it works, right? If you lose your supply, all will be connection will be switched to inverter. All you know, uh, these appliances, electric appliances, they are they will run on inverter. If if you get power supply back, then all will come back. Correct. That is how it works. Okay. That means I want one region should work at a time. If I lose my primary region, that should be switched to secondary standby. If I bring my primary region up, then automatically connection should come back to primary because this is a primary, right? Mean, okay, that is so. Now you might be thinking, so I, how does root fifty three, okay, come to know that my primary region is down? Yeah, now I'll tell you. The way load balancer is checking the health of these two servers, root fifty three will check the health of these load balancer every now and then. That health check we discussed in load balancer. In that manner. Root fifty three checks health of load balancer of only primary. Stand by no need, right? Because see, car Stephanie is there. We keep the Stephanie always ready only. We need not to verify every now and then. Correct or not? So root fifty three will check the health of load balancer. If my servers are down, my load balancer will be down. If load balancer is down, then root fifty three will come to that. Yes, this is down. Then immediately it will redirect the traffic to Sydney. That means root fifty three will send ping request to load balancer, whether it is getting response or not. The moment it is not getting response, yes, immediately the request will be routed to standby. When you troubleshoot and all, when you bring this one up, all connections will back to this one, and again Sydney will go out in a standby mode. That is what fail over. You can see. Failover routing policies are used when you want to have active passive setup. Active, see here, user root fifty three. These active, these are passive. Primary standby. Because of any reason, see right now all requests are being routed to primary active. If at all any reason, if I lose my region, then it will stop sending traffic to that region. It will redirect the traffic to standby region. Okay. That is it. see here. Example: You may want your primary site in one region, and secondary disaster recovery site. Disaster recovery. If something disastrous happens to primary, second one acting like a recovery site. Okay, that's why we call disaster recovery site. Route fifty three will monitor the health of primary site. See, route fifty three will monitor health. Okay, that by using health check. If at all health fails, then only request will be routed to standby. Health check and all same like load bands. And the final one is geolocation routing policy. By name itself, we can understand it's purely based on geographical location. Geolocation. That means, see, you might have observed, right? Suppose you open Amazon, you want to buy something in India. You are from India. You want to buy something from Amazon.com. You can see all prices in rupees. Correct. Sometimes you might have observed Hindi language or other Indian native languages. Simple example. When I type here Google dot com, what is this here? Indian languages, Hindi, is okay. Telugu, Marathi, Tamil, Malayalam, Kannada. You can see, right? Now Bengali, yes, Bengali, right? You can see different, different. Languages, okay. different, different. Suppose you might have tried. You know, I, I don't know if you had been abroad, uh, been to abroad any time. There you just type Google. Then you can see their local languages. For example, if you do that in Singapore, Malaysia, then you can see Malay language, Tamil. I mean, their native languages, like that. Okay, so that's all. So how does Google know that I am I'm from India? Because when I type Google.com, my request DNS request is being originated in India, in in India. So Google comes to that hey, the request is coming from India. So everything we should show in a Indian region. That is so. Same thing. Simple example. You you try to buy something from Amazon. You can see all prices in rupees. Suppose if you are doing the same thing in US, UK. In UK you will find in pounds. In US you will find in you know dollars. In Singapore, in Malaysia, ringgits. Correct. So same thing. What I want, I want. If a customer is from 
you know, uh, let me take two other reasons. Okay, one is, yeah, Mumbai. And one is U US. That's what, you know, California something. US. So I want if a customer is from India, okay, his request should be routed to Mumbai region. Because here I configure prices in local, local you know, currency, language, local language, Hindi and all. If a customer is from US, his request should be routed to California. That means purely based upon geographical location. From where user is searching. Okay. So from where I see, I'm, if I type Google in my laptop now, from where I'm right now, I'm in India. That means DNS query is being originated from India. So purely based upon user geographical location, I want to redirect the traffic to their respective regions. That's what geolocation. Okay. Geolocation. See here. If I customer is from European Union, EU, his request should be routed to Europe. If he's from US, his request should be routed to US. Like that. See, geolocation routing policy. Geolocation routing lets you choose where your traffic will be sent based upon geographic location of your users. That is from where the DNS queries are being originated. Symbol, you might want to see all queries from Europe should be routed to fleet, means group of easy instances that are specially configured for Europe customers. European customer request should be routed to Europe servers, where you configure local language, European, you know, language, prices in euros and all, like that. Okay. So in that case, we use geolocation routing policy. Okay. So these are five routing policies that you can choose what you want. You can't have both in one group. You can't have multiple routing policies in one group. For example, see, I want to have geolocation plus weighted. Weighted means here I'm giving some 30 weightage. Here 70 weightage. Uh, user And you are configured geolocation also. User is from India. One side, you are saying that his request should come to India only. And suppose, okay, all customers are, 100% customers are from India. So as per geolocation, all requests should be come to Mumbai only. But you are giving VT also. Again, you are saying that in that 70% should go to California also. There is a conflict, right? You can have anyone, not all. Okay. At the same time, you are configuring what uh, failover. You are saying that all requests should be routed to Mumbai only. If at all it goes down, then only there. Again, you are giving weighted 70 there. That's a conflict, right? Okay. So that's, you can have only one. So these are different, different routing policies uh, that we are going to, I'm going to show you practically all these things guys tomorrow in next class, I'm going to show practically. Then you'll get clear picture that yes, how people are using this one. Actually what is happening in companies. Okay. These are about routing policies. Okay. So all these things we'll see in our next class. Okay. Yeah. Today I'll be sharing this PPT. Uh, if you have any doubts, you can ask me. Hi, sir. So yeah. we have to, if you purchase that uh, domain, then we have to uh, assign yeah. some IP to that domain. So we have to set a child name server or web server IP. So that will be get auto assigned or we have to do that. That I'll show you right in next class. Then you'll understand. I'm okay. going to show that one practically. Right. Okay. Sorry, what is this? Tell the slide. We did not open. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right, right, right. Say, yes. say it is weightage is locally distributed or eighty percent. Locally it means it will be distributed between regions, based upon the weight that you assign. Yes. And what parameters do you assign that weightage? Ah, wait, wait. Yes, yes, there are some parameters are there. I, why I did not explain that one? Because while showing practical only, I can explain. See here, you might be getting out. So I, whether it's a based on number of requests out of 100, 30 here, 70 here, or out of one hour, first is 30 minutes time here, remaining, so, you know, like that. So whether it's a time based or number of requests based, okay, number of users, that I'll explain tomorrow. 
okay in next okay. i mean in next class when i show practicals so okay. uh, 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 there is a edge location that right? we cannot see latency routing calls no no edge location purpose is different that i will, i will explain when i talk about cloud front those are also there to avoid latency only when i explain okay. cloud front then you will understand that okay thank you uh, hello sir yes please like uh, elastic load balancer health check is there any health check for route 253 ah uh, no 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 that is the highest level see there is a in india there is no other court to check supreme court that is the highest level okay so okay. it is final final decision okay okay yeah there should be some limit right <laughs> yes, yes. okay yeah. sir which which routing policy we, we will use in our i don't know that i i will i won't explain now because i'll show practicals of all five then i will tell you what actually which one we use because i need to explain the reasons also which one we are using okay okay sir hello yeah good so we can use only single policy at a time yes. it is right at, at a time only one only okay Uh, say where where does auto scaling comes here like under load yeah. see all these servers are there right? these we are going to launch by using auto scale not manually got it understood yes yes mummy odustunna adu super any more doubts from anyone uh no sir no doubts fine that's it guys for today uh tomorrow class is there yeah yeah tomorrow yeah we have a holiday right ganesh chaturthi right yes yeah fine so tomorrow there won't be any class enjoy the festival everyone uh our next class would be on monday okay see you all on monday's class okay thank you yeah. so enjoy this three days ganesh you are getting three days holidays uh please you know utilize this time now you enjoy i'm not saying that don't enjoy uh please do revise all these things okay so that after this course you you need not to spend much time uh for revision and all if you utilize the time okay yeah thank you all guys see you, you on sir. monday's class yeah so uh, happy ganesh chaturthi to you all yeah thank you thank you bye guys have a nice day bye thank you sir